Councillor here in Singapore, uh, one of the organisers for the Heritage Race uh, that's going to lead our discussion. But first, I'll just get your take on some of those stories. Have you ever had a scenario like that, booked a holiday to one destination and been sent completely well, to another? supposed to go on one continent but end up on another continent? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> It's quite ridiculous, don't you think? Also, I want to get your, your view on tipping, because you work in like, the hotel industry. Yes. Uh, so, it's just not the culture here, is it? No, it's not. And I've been to restaurants in London or in US where the waitresses really take pride in serving you. They'll come by and chat with you, they'll check how's your food. And it's because of the tip. Mm. But whereas in Singapore, it's a job. So most of them were just, okay, I serve you the food and then that's it. Yes, you bet now. Yes. yes I guess it's an and case. also then, there's also the, about employing people. People say, oh, I don't want to be a waitress. Not in Singapore because of the stigma that's surrounding it. Mm. But in, I think in London, they are quite proud to say, I'm a waitress. Yes. I'm, at, I'm serving at this great once Michelin star restaurant. Mm. Yes. Especially and if you get great tips. Yeah, yeah that's you right. do. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, I don't know if that's going to change very much, but uh, let's move on to the story, that, or the reason why, we're, why we brought you in today, to talk to us a bit about the heritage race uh, that took place uh, last week. Just yes. tell us sort of a, a, just a, a, give us an idea of what happened. Uh, so basically, the participants are supposed to go on, to look for 20 stops along the Balestia Heritage Trail, and they're supposed to complete, they have six minutes to complete every stop, and surprisingly, the first three teams came in within one hour. Wow. Because 20 stops, you're supposed to finish in two hours, but they finished before a an hour. So is it a bit of a treasure hunt as well? Are there clues given and the people have to try and f figure out where they well, are? We, we, have have a, time? we have a passport, so there's 20 stops and we'll give them details and we'll say, oh, what this place is about. But we don't give addresses, <laughs> so you're supposed to go and look along the trail where are the stops. Okay. But it's pretty easy. It's actually all along Balassie Road, so okay. not too so bad. And it's, it's, it's a very novel way, I guess, of uh, getting people interested in local culture and local heritage. How did the idea, or where did it come from? Because you come, you have, you know, you're from a hotel, but it's not just the hotel that got involved. Mm -hmm. So basically, when we opened up Ramada and Days Hotel Singapore at Zhongshan Park, which was actually in late 2013, we faced the problem many times. The same question comes, where's Zhongshan Park? Everyone is like at the law side, where's the venue? And so we had to tell them, oh, it's because of Sun Yat-sen Memorial Hall is just behind, behind the park. That's why the park commemorates uh, Sun Yat-sen. And then when Siu Hoon, we met up with her over a casual chat, she said, oh, she's thinking about doing this heritage race. And she's trying to do it uh, somewhere else. I'm like, hey, why don't you do it at Balestia? We'll be happy to support you because we want to bring up the awareness of Balestia. People know where's Chinatown. They know where's Arab Street. They know where's Little India. But when it comes to Balestia, a lot of tourists are still like, where is it? Mm -hmm. um, just to explain, it's just around the corner. Yeah, she's yes. the founder of uh, Wedding Travel and she's actually been on my show yes. uh, before talking to us about sort of, uh, the travel in the Middle East. Yeah, uh, so she's the other organizer. Yeah, so she's the other organizer. So this event sort of, uh, it had sort of, I suppose, it mixed agendas to begin with. It also had a, had a charity involved. Yes, uh, so all the funds that we raise uh, goes to the Amoy OH Home. So it's Racing for Heritage. It's a heritage race. So yeah, it fits, the theme fits perfectly. Well, I'm familiar with it because it's just around the corner from us here at Media Corp. Yes. And also, uh, I know that it's known for all its lighting shops. Mm -hmm. Also, what else do I know about the school for? Of course, we're very familiar because we have to go through the last year <laughs> and every the, morning, yeah, coming here, yeah, all going and some home. of the food places. But tell us a bit more about the heritage that people should know about. Oh, there's actually a lot of shops there, old businesses that are there, that has been there for the past thirty to sixty years. So and if their children don't take over the businesses, it could be a dying trade. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so it is. It may no longer be viable in the current world. So those businesses may close, and I always tell visitors if you don't, if you go there in the next ten years, they may not be there anymore. So okay. it's kind of like the nice little like a uh, local so small small industries, I guess, uh, or small yes. shop houses that have been in Singapore. Small shops, okay. yeah. Coffee powder, old spectacles, vintage glasses, uh, traditional bakeries. There's a trip down memory lane. Uh, for it some. is, and nostalgia is now hit, right? Everyone <laughs> is into nostalgia, so it fits the theme perfectly. Okay, how did, what was the reaction of the participants? Did they enjoy it? Uh, we saw some shots of uh, people running around and sort of uh, waving at the camera and mm -hmm. cheering. They seem to be enjoying themselves. So when we went around asking the participants how they feel about the race and what caught their attention. A lot of them were like, oh, I didn't know Sun Yat Sen Nanyang Memorial Hall was actually a mansion bought by a man for his mistress. No. So, little, <laughs> little trivia like that is interesting. Or they really like the traditional bakery because you don't see that around Singapore anymore. And also the spectacle shop, coffee powder. 
So we, we try to bring in food and also businesses as well as the heritage sites like landmarks itself. Now this kind of a race, uh, given how quickly Singapore sort of transitions and grows and, and you know, just new condos coming up all over the place and buildings and things, do you think a race such as this, one, is, is, is it important and two, do you think it's going to get harder and harder to do? It is because sustaining it could be difficult and also, like you said, Singapore is so developing so fast, then the call comes, do you maintain this heritage or do you want to put a new business up there? So that, that's a challenge. I and think that's a challenge that every country is facing. Mm, every country is facing it, and this is something that is quite transferable, this kind of event. I mean, you could take this and, and take it to Vietnam or Cambodia yes. or Bangkok to run through the streets uh, looking for all these heritage sites. Correct. So that's what Sihun, the, the other organizer, hopes to do. That Because when you travel, it's about the heritage of the place as well. You want to see as much as you can about the other country. So she's hoping to bring it overseas with okay. this concept. I, I've got to ask her, how serious was the running? Because I, I saw like a whole spectrum of people, some super keen, <laughs> uh, some sort of families on like a day out. I mean, it has to be something that's, that's quite like easy or sort of easy for most people to do, I would think. We, we wanted them to take an easy pace. So we said six minutes per stop. We thought that was quite difficult. They won't be able to finish within two hours. But there were people who, upon receiving the passport, which was on the day of registration, they went through the pages, they started Googling on their phones, smartphones, right? So, <laughs> so they started Googling, planning their routes, and then they really dash for it. Okay. And, so and the weather didn't make it easy, but they, they really are good. So you think like there's, like you can almost get competitive. I mean, it, was it competitive? I think it's competitive because we were giving out cash prizes. So the first team walked away with $1,008, cohort cash. Okay. So we so had fun, there were so many participants. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were raising money for a good cause and they were learning a lot of things along the way as well. Uh, what sort of lessons do you think you've learned though uh, to, if you were to do this again or to take it overseas? Make it harder. <laughs> Make it harder? Yeah. Make it longer? Mm. <laughs> longer, harder, uh, more challenges perhaps. Okay. But I think lessons learned is also, we as organizers, we learned that about the heritage of our own area. Mm -hmm. So when I did the race, we had to go around personally to select the 20 stops. So that, that was fun. I learned a lot myself as well. I think it's important to. Okay, well, thanks so much for coming and talking to us about it. I really look forward to seeing if this adventure, uh, this idea of having a heritage race that takes off uh, yes. overseas as well, or even in other parts of Singapore. Ray yeah, Tam. we're doing it again next year. Ah. So every year. Excellent, yep. excellent. We look forward to that. Ray Tam from Ramada and Days Hotels, uh, Singapore, eh? in Jongshan uh, Park. Still ahead here on First of Asia, all the latest results are from